backseat without knockout. Three holes out with one fire to the bill. Yes, to land this Mr. Space. Walter Gretzky. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm fine. I'm still standing beside you. Hey, wow. Sorry, Take two. Oh, you. Just go ahead and pinch me. Go on now. Their craft has to win 40-foot wooden schooners, the traditional kind. Stephanie Balmont, welcome to CNBC, the show that celebrates all the people, places, and things that make the four Atlantic provinces so very special. From Nova Scotia to New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island to Newfoundland and Labrador, we take you to where the action is. And that's why we're in Halifax for the Atlantic Film Festival. It's the 33rd annual season of cinematic celebration, a coming together of film industry folks, producers, directors, writers, actors, musicians, composers, buyers, movie makers, movers and shakers. If film is your focus, then you best be here for the business and the pleasure, the networking and the stargazing too, and of course, all those movies. Come on, you gotta see this. 185 films of every genre from all around the world and here on the East Coast will screen at this year's festival. Seductive shorts, feel-good features, poignant documentaries, something for everyone, and then some. With a slate that packed, it'll take two shows to show you all that goes on at the AFF, so we best get to it. While it might be the 33rd year for the festival, it also holds a lot of firsts, and we'll focus on those in this first part, beginning with the movie that holds the coveted opening gala marquee. The Grand Seduction stars Brendan Gleeson, Taylor Kitsch, and a slew of Atlantic greats, including Mr. Gordon Pinson, who we'll chat with later. With rave reviews and stand Standing ovations at TIFF, the film has come home to premiere in not one, not two, but three sold-out cinemas. It marks the first time the film's director, Don McKellar, shot a movie in Newfoundland. But as we hear from the film's co-producer, Barbara Doran, he fit right in. One thing that I noticed the minute Don uh, put his boots on the ground in Newfoundland was that he got it. Um, and you were very sensitive about attitude. You come from a small place and you have big town players coming in and you know the hair goes up on the back of your neck. I never felt that for one minute with Don because he was, uh, he got it right away. He was terrific with the crew, terrific with the cast and uh, it's an absolute delight to work with him. Not only is he great to work with, but his track record is extraordinary. Mr. McKellar is a multi-award winning actor, writer and director. Be it for the stage, the small or the silver screen, his talents are remarkable. I want to just hug him, but I just met him. I'm so Why happy. Why not? Well, I hug don't know. I don't, okay. You can't say you want to. Extraordinary. Thank you. I mean, okay, first of all, Don McKellar really needs no introduction because we all know you as that crazy comedian from Republic of Doyle. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Is that what you know me as? He's a, he was a horrible character. Well, I'm just kidding. He was a really unpleasant guy. He was a villain. Yes, but but in the end, you reunited with your son. That's, and that's true. What's important. It was sort of moving at the end. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you see it that way. We have a huge Republic of Doyle following on our site. I loved it. I loved it. Being on, I've, I'd always wanted to shoot in Newfoundland. Yeah. Uh, I've been there a number of times, and then Alan Hawko yes. invited me out, and it's like, yes, of course, I want to do that. Right. And then it, I must say, it was one of the things that influenced me doing this movie okay. because because I thought I love Newfoundland. I want to I want to do something there. Well, let's talk about that because you know on CNBC we celebrate the four Atlantic provinces, and I think that obviously with the Grand Seduction, this community is really a character. And I mean, totally. what was that like shooting there? Because you're pretty rural. I'm pretty what? You're rural. I'm rural. Not you, but the, the location film. is very rural. Yeah, no, based. no, yeah. no. It's pretty. It is pretty rural. It's, I thought you meant I was rural, which no, was sir, a bit of an, very, I wish I was, but you're very Cosmo. I don't. I just met you, but again, I feel like I can. Judge. I'm pretty suave. You are. And uh, urbane. Um, we shot about two and a half hours. You know, we shot in the Bonavista Peninsula yeah. and um, up around a number of different locations. It was pretty rural, and you're right. The town is really one of the main characters. Yeah. Because it's really about a town seducing this doctor to stay there. Right. And uh, so I really cast almost everyone in the movie is from Newfoundland. Uh, and we really cast a lot of people live around there, a lot of locals. Uh, and they're real characters too, they're not just actors, they really no, come right. back again and again and, uh, and some of them are, are brilliant actually, so uh, well, we, were, we were lucky. We couldn't, I knew that we couldn't find those people anywhere else. No. We, the main thing about shooting in Newfoundland is the people, that's what people always get. I mean the landscapes are spectacular, yes. but 
you need those people there. That's why we had to shoot it all in Newfoundland. Plus, we had people, you know, all, everyone, so many people helping us that weren't official crew members, but... Because it's that kind of... And people bringing you food, Yeah, probably. bringing us food and taking us fishing, and uh, which was also really necessary. A great way to spend a summer. Well, it was, it was enjoyable, but for us it was also necessary, you know, because we had to, actors had to learn to fish and, oh, uh, and take, we had to rent boats and film off boats and things. So, right. was, so we had a lot of people helping us. Nice. Okay. So let me ask you this. You're brought on a year and a half ago, yes. and now you're sitting in the audience and you get standing ovations in Toronto, yes. and people are loving your film. As a director, how are you feeling? What's that like? Well, I won't deny that it was pretty good. Yeah. It was a pretty good Were feeling. Ever That's why I'm here tonight. I want more of that. And you'll get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is the hometown well, crowd, right? Well, I, I, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping it's going to be even bigger. Um, well, sure, I was nervous. Of course I was nervous because no one had really seen it. And my cast hadn't seen it. Gordon Pinson hadn't seen it. And uh, that's always nerve-wracking for the director. Do you let it go, though? That's... I would love to know that. I haven't I was, fully you, let like, it go. Futzing going, oh man, why did I, or did you go, oh, I love that no. I did that. What well, do you think? I mean, it helped screening it because it went really well. It played very, very well. We got a lot of laughs. So it, it really did help me release. Yes. If that's what you mean. Yeah. It's such a pleasure to meet you and congratulations. Thank I'm you very glad much. that we have him now because in a week's time with the Hollywood what? Reporter and all that stuff. I'm not going to go to Hollywood. You're I want to stay here in Canada. Yeah. And you'll come back and shoot in the, in the Atlantic provinces again? I would again? love to if there's an opportunity. We'll keep our fingers crossed for the future. In the meantime, Dawn is directing and co-starring alongside Kim Cattrall in the new series for TV called Sensitive Skin. We'll look forward to that as well. Another highly anticipated movie screening at the festival this year filmed last summer in New Brunswick and marked the first time that historic King's Landing had ever been used for a feature film location. Have a look at Ron Maxwell's Copperhead. The war between the states, that's what Abner Beach called it. It'd been going on for a year before it really got to us in the upper part of New York State. They called us people in the North that didn't want the war, copperheads. We were far from the battles. At least, I thought we were. Springtime, 1862. That's when the war came home, and nothing was ever the same again. I don't want to see politics tear our community apart. It already has. I do not want our boys dying. And I don't want the Constitution dying with them. I can't believe I'm sitting next to Ron Maxwell. Is it all right for me to fawn over you just marginally before I, I we start? I love fawning. I love fawning. <laughs> fawn away. <laughs> there you go. Well, I mean, first of all, congratulations, because what a beautiful film. And I know it's not the first of yours to have been made, but it's certainly great to have one here in Atlanta, Canada that was made in Atlanta, Canada. Tell me about filming in New Brunswick. Well, you're quite right, Stephanie. This movie was made entirely here. I think there are only four non-Canadians on the entire production cast crew. That would be me. Yes. Uh, the uh, the producer director. Uh, that would be um, the cinematographer Case van Ostrom, uh, and the editor Mark Pollan, and the music director David Franco. Everyone else on this picture is from Halifax. Or Fredericton. Which is wonderful. And I mean, again, this is not an area that's new to you in terms of capturing on the screen, but what about that setting in King's Landing? Like, could you have asked for a better... No, uh, when I arrived on that in that place, I thought, how did they know <laughs> 60, 70 years ago when they put this town together that it was exactly what I needed to make Copperhead? I yeah. thought that was really visionary thinking yes, on, the, on the part of those, <laughs> um, you know, town f elders. Uh, it's it's remarkable. Of course, we we know the story. I learned the story of how that uh, valley was flooded to create the hydroelectric plant, yeah. and the people said we have to save some of this architecture. This is our heritage. This yeah. is where our ancestors lived. I find that so deeply moving because that that's a huge effort and a commitment yeah. on the part of people to do that. And then they saved all these buildings. And then they just kind of warehoused them for a while. And then the next generation came along and said, let's make them live again. 
Isn't that extraordinary? It is. It is. And now you have people from Fredericton and the surrounding areas who are like kind of docents. They learn to live as people did in the yeah. 19th century, and they learn different crafts and skills and the way people worked on the farm and in rural communities. So you go into that place, you're in a time warp. Yes. And the people are into it. They also have a treasure trove of furniture. Uh, in the real world, it's called furniture and antiques. We call it set dressing. Yes. <laughs> and in a normal movie, your set dressing crew has to go all over creation to find these things on a historical piece. Most of what we needed, we found in their collection uh, that people had donated over the years. So we had to redress rooms to make it work for the movie and, and, and move things around. So it, took a, it still took a lot of pre-production to get it ready to shoot. But my goodness, we started at such an advantage. Yes. And no matter where you are in King's Landing, no matter where you put the camera, you could see out to the edge of the town and there would be open fields and farmland exactly the way North American towns were in the middle of the 19th century, which is very difficult to find now in, oh, in North goodness. America. Well, you talk about telling the story and so much of that relies on a great cast and I mean, you did it. How did you put that together? I couldn't be happier with this cast. It is the perfect cast. Every single person on that screen inhabits that role, is that role, yeah. owns that role. Uh, and I hasten to add, not only were they perfect for the roles, but what a bunch of really nice people. Yeah. What a wonderful way to spend right. a few weeks with this cast, a sheer joy. Early on, we made a decision that we were going to cast uh, six of the parts um, uh, out of Los Angeles from the entire pool of anglophonic actors, whether they're from New Zealand or England and everyone in between. And then the rest of the cast, which is about 25, 25 or so parts, we'd cast it out of Halifax. And uh, uh, Sheila Lane and Zoe, uh, and her crew, they brought in all these wonderful uh, actors from the Maritimes who yes. play these roles. And we'll chat with one of those great Halifax actors Mr. Maxwell mentioned, Copperhead co-star Josh Crudus, in part two of our AFF special. Coming up after the break, though, we'll celebrate some more firsts. Cass and Dylan's Jason Priestley and All the Wrong Reasons' Gia Milani talk with us about having their first feature film screen at this year's festival. Music plays such an important role in any movie, and each year, as a means of fostering the craft, 10 new Atlantic Canadian filmmakers and 10 new Atlantic Canadian musicians pair up to produce 10 music videos. It's five days of on-the-ground shooting and editing with professional gear, post-production support, and access to mentors. Those 10 videos share a special screening during the festival, and a winner is chosen. You're watching this year's 10x10 Emerging Artist Champion from filmmaker Matthew Ingram and musician Sean LeBlanc. And take note, because it holds your TV free stuff clue for this episode. We'll be right back. Welcome back to See and Be Seen from the 33rd Annual Atlantic Film Festival. Folks have gathered in pre-show celebration for tonight's opening gala screening of The Grand Seduction. As you might know, the movie is an English-language remake of the 2003 Quebecois film Le Grand Seduction. It was a huge hit, and now thanks to one producer's passion, the award-winning and much-beloved story is being told again. Everyone is applauding this picture, and really, as we un I understand from Barbara Doran, it's all because of you, Monsieur Frappier. Yeah. Is that right? Well, in a way, because I did the French version yes. 10 years ago, and I had the feeling that it didn't have its full potential. And you know, comedy is so difficult to, to make when you have a good one. And so that's why uh, ten, 10 years before, I decided to, to do it in English. And this has been in your heart, just basically, I've got to get this made. Is yes, that right? Yes. And I've met with Barbara Dorn here at the Atlantic Film Festival three years ago. And it's where we decided to work together. And I really always wanted it to do it in Newfoundland, not to do it in the same place as it I did. It works perfectly. Can you imagine a better place? No, I cannot, you know. And uh, Newfoundland, is, first of all, is so beautiful. It has character. Uh, it also could be the Irish coast. It could be, you know, it, it has a Canadian and European uh, atmosphere to it and uh, the little villages we took three little villages to to do our cinematographic village and it was so beautiful yeah. and we were so lucky we only had like uh, uh, an hurricane for two days the rest of the time 
that Which for Newfoundland is pretty great. Yes, the rest of the time the weather was incredible. And incroyable are the reviews of the other movie Monsieur Frappier produced at this year's AFF. L'Autre Maison is this year's Gala Francais Canadian film. Fair to say, Roger is très, très busy this week. And awesome to know it was here at the AFF that tonight's fabulous feature, The Grand Seduction, got its legs, as they say in the biz. So many movies do, thanks to the great work of strategic partners whose goal all it is to make connections, find partners, get projects financed, and get them on the big screen. Industry folks from 22 countries are here in Halifax for this festival, taking part in the discussions and the deals, the receptions and the roundtables. That's all thanks to strategic partners. We bring in the people, okay. and we make sure that we bring in qualified people. Okay. So the producers that come, um, you know, they've all been vetted to make sure that they have the proper qualifications, the right, right. producer credits, and then we just scour the earth and the, you know, across the, the seas and the lands to make sure that we've got financiers and distributors and broadcasters and sales agents that want to pick up all of these projects. It's, re it's about serving the project's obje objective. And it's a really exciting time. I mean, I just think about this festival and how much it's grown. I'm imagining you're seeing that on your side of the business as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, co-production becomes more and more revel uh, relevant, um, you know, as the years go on because financing becomes harder yeah. and harder. And also the world gets smaller. So it's much more easier to access, uh, you know, distribution and marketing in other countries. Much more easy for people to sort of uh, find financing in other countries. It's just it's a small world. Everybody knows each other. Now, talk to me a little bit about what you do because you're you're not just here, right? Are you working the world on our behalf? Absolutely. Oh yeah. No, I I travel quite a bit. Yeah. Um, uh, throughout the spring, mostly. Yeah. Uh, we had to Berlin. Do you love out. it though? You're very calm. Yeah. Like I would be like, woohoo! It's great. Is I it right? You're love just working. To no, yeah. I mean I love to travel, but that's yeah. it. I mean it's it's really busy, and when you you know when I go on these trips, it's uh, like I jam pack my schedule. I mean this is money we're spending. So are I'm you a good packer? Now that's personal, but seriously, because I mean I'm a terrible packer. I usually true? bring like two suitcases that are huge, because. I just have no idea what you're going to want to wear, right? right? So you got to have at least three outfits per day. If it's cold, if it's warm. And I'm seeing a whole segment you and I should do together. And then I'll go with you and carry your bag. Travel fashion. Is that wrong? With Stephanie and Laura. And I want to tell you, Ms. McKenzie was very busy during the festival, so it was great to catch her for a chat. And hey, speaking of fashion, coming up in just a bit, the hottest styles that will have you looking fabulous from day to night. Right now, though, another first. The first feature film from Fredericton, New Brunswick-born writer-director Gia Milani. Have a look at all the wrong reasons. I'm the new regional manager. I'd just like to thank you for all your hard work. Merry Christmas, Mr. Asher. Uh, James! <laughs> you all right? No, can you just not cross that red line? I have a thing with personal space. I'm married, so I don't want my wife finding out about this. I have worked so hard to get us to the top. You gotta let this go. Okay, you just gotta confront this. The film that stars Emily Hampshire, Karen Vaness, Kevin Zegers, and the late Corey Monteith made its world premiere at TIFF and scored Ms. Milani the Grosch Film Works Discovery Award and garnered rave reviews. Naturally, we were thrilled she made time to chat before the Atlantic Gala screening of her film here at home on the East Coast. Now, just between us, the three of us, if you will. Um, you're nervous, more nervous here than TIFF. That's not right. I am. I didn't get any butterflies for TIFF. I don't know why. I, I don't know if it was because I was so um, emotionally spent about the whole experience up there because it was just packed. But here, I know people here. These are the people that taught me and mentored me and um, helped out. And this is where my funding came from. This is where Telefilm is. And all the, the filmmakers of, of the Maritimes are here. Right. And a lot of them are going to be there tonight. So it's my peers. It's like, you know, showing your colleagues. Your and Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm much more nervous. I'm, I am nervous here. I wasn't oh nervous gosh. in Toronto. Well, you look like a million bucks for somebody who's been, like, in a whirlwind, <laughs> right? I know that there are so many people out there who dream of this moment um, on every side of the project um, and, and sometimes people would think you know I'm from Fredericton that's never gonna happen for me but how what advice would you give them to start because you know I it, it may seem daunting but it's doable oh it's doable yeah. for sure and I um, I think that my biggest thing is to not give up because a lot of people started with me who have an amazing talent more much more talented than than I am and they gave up and that's what that's why they didn't do anything and it's because they stopped because it's hard it's really really hard and you have to go through a lot of stuff but 
I would just say keep at it. And I think you can do it from anywhere. It might be harder if you're doing it away from um, a big center like Toronto or Los Angeles. Right. Um, but it's still doable. It, it just takes a lot of hard work and stick with it. Now, and I don't like to ask this question of directors because we're here to celebrate this wonderful achievement, but you've got something else cooking. Is that yeah, fair? We have a couple things. So um, the, the next feature that we've been working on is called Strathcona. And it's about a girl aging out of foster care. So we've had that in development for the last year. So hopefully it will get some legs and, and it won't take five and a half years to get to screen. That's like what I'm hoping for. And that's for. another one you're writing? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we should, you know, they, they often say behind every successful man is a wonderful woman. But you've got a wonderful fella yeah. that's flanking you, right? Yeah, it's Let's true. give a shout out to Mr. Whalen. Yes, Tony Whalen uh, is my husband and a producing partner. So we have a production company, Shore Road Pictures. Right. So he produced this along with Buffalo Gal Phyllis Lang and Monique Perot. So uh, the four of us got this off the ground. But yeah, he's been there right from the beginning. Right. So he's been the longest producer on this and been through a lot. Bless his heart. <laughs> anyway, we wish you all congratulations. And we'll look forward to another big celebration here in future years. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. Right on. Hey, and for the record, those two sold out cinemas here at home, well, they loved all the wrong reasons. Another director screening his first feature film needs no introduction thanks to his roles in front of the camera, be it in his breakout role as Brandon Walsh in Beverly Hills 90210 or his award winning and wildly inappropriate Richard Fitzpatrick in Call Me Fitz. But he's no stranger to the director's chair either. With 20 credits from the small screen, he's at the Atlantic Film Festival for the world premiere of his first big screen picture, Kaz and Dylan. Jason Priestley, how are you? Like, I mean, <laughs> come on. I'm good, I'm, actually, I'm really good, thank I mean, you. Yeah. Okay, because I did math, and I'm thinking you were 12 and I was like 10, the first time you directed, it was like 20 years ago. It was 20 years ago. Right? I wish I wish <laughs> I was only 12 back then. But I was, uh, but I was 23, okay. and I just had my 44th birthday. Was, How did that happen? I was 10. You were 10, exactly. And people are at home going playing the home I game, believe going, no, that's I, be not right. I believe it that you were 10. But let me tell you, this is your first feature. So yes. 20 years later, is there any one lesson that you gleaned from that first time out that you're still using or honed or what? Can you remember anything? <laughs> like check the gate or I don't know. <laughs> um, Wow, is there, is there, was there any one first lesson that, must that have I been learned huge, that first day? Right? Well, it, well, it was, well, it was, right? and it was, and it was, and it was nine hundred two and zero, and it was, and it was, you know, Aaron handed me the keys to that, uh, to that show when I was twenty three, and I, I, you know, I think back at it now, and I think, what was that old man thinking? <laughs> Come on, like he must have been going soft in the head already by then. Like I, I like literally, I can't. I'm still shocked uh, when I think about it now, yeah. but I'm but I'm very uh, I'm very thankful that he did because I directed a lot of episodes of that show. Yeah, and I you know I've directed a lot of TV in the in the intervening years, but this is uh, Cass and Dylan is my feature film debut. I'm right. very very excited to have people actually see it tonight. You know I've you're sold I've, out. I've seen it. Yeah, we're and we're sold I out, mean, which is really great. And now I got to tell you, uh, the it girl when it comes to TV, Tatiana. Yeah, Maslani, Tatiana Maslany. And yeah. an Oscar winner. For your cast. Yes, I know. I was. I, I got very, very fortunate with my cast. <laughs> were you first um, or were they first? I was first. You were. Yeah, I so was that's first. That's probably why. I was first, and then and then Tatiana, uh, we got on board, and then and then we went about trying to find our cast, um, and uh, and luckily enough for me. Uh, me and Richard Dreyfus are represented by the same agency in Los Angeles, oh. so I was able to uh, get to Richard Dreyfus, and he responded to the material. I heard the script is fantastic. The script, the, the script was really, it was a really beautiful little story, yeah. um, and, it, and it was really, you know, it's just, it's just a lovely, it's a lovely little story, and, yeah. and I, I, you know, I just hope the people here tonight really enjoy it. I'm sure they will. Okay, just got one more question because we consider this, I do anyway, like your second home. And I love that you're kind pre of premiering this movie at home. Well, thank would you. That be I fair? was. I it, it would be I feel like fair. Our adopted Nova I was, Scotia brother. I, I was very <laughs> excited to come back here to Halifax. You yeah. know, I love Nova Scotia. I work here all the time. Obviously, yeah. obviously on Fitz and on Haven, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've been the, the first feature film that I made. Uh, the first independent feature that I made, like in 1995, was Love and Death on Long Island. We shot yes. that here in, in Nova Scotia. It was in Chester, right? Were you there? Uh, we were or? in. Uh, we were. Because I did in, a movie special and said it was, so just say it was. Yeah, we were in Chester. Yeah. That's where we were. We shot the whole thing in Chester. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll just super that and make your mouth change to Digby <laughs> or something. Um, okay. And now uh, you mentioned Haven, so quickly I'll just ask you because Chris Brody, everyone misses him, and we're, we do this Nathan. 
Audrey, Duke Audrey, and right. a wild card by Alila Zuckerman, Chris right. and Audrey. Right. She wants right. you back. Right. Well, I think she's right. <laughs> we love to have well, you back. Chris, well, I was, you know, I, I really enjoyed my time there on that show, yeah. and you know, I love all those guys. They're all friends of mine, and um, uh, I had a really good time there. And even when I'm not acting on the show, I tend to, I tend to come in every year and direct that show as well. Now you weren't there um, for the fourth <clears> season, though, right? Or I was not there at all in the fourth season. I was, I was too busy directing uh, a bunch movie? of other stuff. Well, this this movie we actually shot during the. Uh, during the third season of the show, I directed I directed uh, Haven with the and then Haunted I, Mansion with the Haunted Mansion episode, which uh, the the documentary they shot about the shooting of the so Haunted good. Mansion episode is actually playing at the Atlantic Film Festival right now. Yeah, so I guess I have two films in the festival. Ladies and How about gentlemen, that? Jason Priestley, congratulations! <laughs> eh? So happy. Thank you. It's time to dole out some TV free stuff, and what a prize pack we've got up for grabs. Asif Ilias is an award-winning film composer, producer, musician. You name it, the man's got skills. And I've got a signed copy of his new CD, plus an exclusive track that SF composed for the mega award-winning film Blackbird. And to top that all off, we've got a whole lot of loot from the Atlantic Film Festival, folks, with like a t-shirt and a bag, souvenir program, poster, and a whole lot more. And it can all be yours if you can answer this question. What special outfit did the girl in this year's 10 by 10 Emerging Artist video have on? Can you remember? I hope so. Once you've got the answer, hit the website. It's www.cnbc.com. Click on the TV free stuff button and submit your answer. Good luck to you, and we'll be right back. If you'd like to watch this show again or see any episode of CNBC, visit www.bellalliant.net. They're all there on demand. And be sure to visit our website at www.cnbc.com. There you'll find extended interviews with all of the guests from this show, plus a whole lot of other cool features too. And be sure to join us for our next episode when we'll continue with part two of our Atlantic Film Festival fun. All the focus is turning to the movie stars. We'll chat with some of them making their big screen debut and one legendary talent with more than 120 roles to his credit. Plus, we'll get to hear some onset secrets and get the scoop on how to look fabulous this fall and winter season from our lovely friends at Foreign Affair. We'll even have some great free stuff, too. I hope you'll join us. Thanks so much for watching CNBC. I'm Stephanie Beaumont. We'll see you next time. We have an amazing industry here, and, and more people need to know about it. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not Hollywood here. It's Hollywood, and it's a place where the audience can get involved in a way that they're they might be intimidated by in a larger center. So, uh, and, and we make and we make great warm, work. Right? And we make great work. Yeah. So, good people. Good, good people. Great films. You're, you should be the poster boy for next year, eh? You want me to? Look, you would look good in these boots, Michael Melsky. <laughs> I'm just, just put a turn a camera on. Turn the camera on. <laughs>